Hello everyone. Today we had a new DCU, DC Cinematic Universe slate from James Gunn, or at least part of it, for Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters. Listen, I have been burnt, like many of you, by DC on film, and Warner Brothers in particular, and then WB Discovery, filled with hope for what may happen with Henry Cavill's return, Gal Gadot, Linda Carter teaming up in Wonder Woman 3. You know, that post-Black Adam credit sequence, what that may mean after the Snyder Cut was finally released, will it be restored? All this sort of stuff. But I can't help but wonder, was it just a zombie of the Snyderverse, you know? And it's sad because I really wanted it to have a proper conclusion. And I don't know. I'm gonna have to see how this reboot is right now. I'm checked out, but not only on DC, I'm just checked out of Marvel, DC, just comic book superhero stuff on film. I'm just burnt out of it all. But James Gunn had a video today and he revealed some of the slate and what's gonna go on. And there's some great stuff here. My main hope is that they actually make most of these films, if not all, because you know, 10 years ago, you remember the DC slate after Man of Steel, they announced like, uh, Wonder Woman, Flash, untitled movie, which probably was going to be like a Man of Steel sequel or a Ben Affleck Batman movie, Ben Affleck's The Batman. And uh, we're going to have Green Lantern Corps. We're going to have Cyborg. A lot of those films did not get made. Justice League 2 did not get made. There's a lot of drama, a lot of politics that happened within the studio. And you had films that were still made, some that weren't very comic book accurate but were still enjoyable and entertaining others that were surprises comic book movies like aquaman that embraced its comic book roots i just hope that most of these films get made because a lot of the films in the dceu were never made and because of some of the stuff that happened um i think something that was special a vision a trajectory was hurt was sacrificed David Ayer's Suicide Squad might have been a completely different story. That's personally not one of my favorite DCEU films, but I still want to see his original cut. Um, if it wasn't for interfering and cutting up movies or uh, firing people and rehiring or creative differences, who knows what type of universe we would have had. If they weren't trying to be Marvel 2.0, we might have had the actual DC universe. Most of the best DC films, you look at Zack Snyder's Justice League, you look at Joker, you look at the Batman, most of them do not try to be like Marvel. They stay true to the characters of DC. That's what makes DC Comics unique and different from everyone else. So I saw James Gunn's video on Twitter and it was a pretty good video, uh, I'm gonna be honest. He, of course, is gonna use more obscure characters. He did that with Marvel and the Guardians of the Galaxy. He did that on Peacemaker. I wasn't too much of a fan of the humor of Peacemaker, even though I think John Cena is amazing as Peacemaker. The humor for that show didn't really do it for me, like the Suicide Squad film. It was just kind of like doubled down on the stuff I didn't like in Suicide Squad. But um, the first one he announced is going to be animation with creature commandos. And that's one interesting thing about this DCU. Everything's going to be connected. I hope it is. I hope they get to make it all because you're going to have the same story or universe across animation, video games, live action, and TV. It's pretty cool because you're gonna have somebody like voice a character that plays him in the movie. It's not gonna be kind of like uh, like Christian Bell's Batman, but then Gotham Knights in between the films and you get Kevin Conroy, you know, even though Kevin Conroy is amazing. We're gonna have like the same people involved in the same universe. So that's kind of cool. And Creature Commandos, yeah, it looks like Weasel's there. I haven't uh, seen them before. So that's gonna be kind of wacky and zanny. Um, and then another one is a spinoff of Peacemaker, and I'm hoping this one's more serious, Waller. I'm glad they did this. Viola Davis, I think, is a wonderful actress. I loved her in How to Get Away with Murder, Fences, The Woman King, underrated film from last year. Yeah, if they do it right, this could be interesting. And um, before I continue, he talked about DC Elseworlds, which I'm so happy. I've been saying for them to do this for years. Make an Elseworld, so the Batman 2's announced for 2025, October 3rd. Joker 2's gonna be on there. Another Superman film's gonna be on there. What I'm hopeful is that maybe we'll get Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman either in the DCU or just conclude her story in the Elseworlds DC. That's like extended universe. This also brings hope for what other standalone movies they could bring, but also if they wanted Zack Snyder, Henry Cavill, or Ben Affleck, or certain people back for like a one-off, 
an Elseworlds label could work. And that's where I remain hopeful in some small degree. But he is rebooting Superman, which I don't think is the right decision. Uh, but we'll have to see how it is. I'll uh, remain open. Uh, to be honest, all the Superman actors have pretty much gotten the shaft. Like even Brandon Ralph wasn't treated well by Warner Brothers and, and now Henry Cavill. But uh, Superman Legacy, it seems like he's going to be basing it off of All-Star Superman. And it's going to be interesting to see a uh, younger Superman. I mean, I've kind of seen that before with Smallville, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see this hopeful Superman. I hope it's not filled with juvenile humor. I hope it actually stays true to the Superman comics. That's one thing I also hope, too, is that they're not only true to the characters, but everything's so unique that it still has that diversity there. That's one thing I loved about the DCEU is that, like, yeah, it's not its official name, but, like, each project never felt like it was the same movie. It's not like Marvel, where I felt like I was watching Captain America, A Civil War, and it was like Avengers 2.0. The cookie cutter kind of quippy humor, like, I was not a fan of, but those films, even though it is one universe, they all just feel the same to me. And that's one thing that I appreciated about the DCEU, whether it's Snyder, uh, James Wan, uh, a version of David Ayer, James Gunn, uh, other filmmakers with Patty Jenkins, like each film had its own identity feel and look and they never felt like they're the same david sandberg on shazam like each film felt unique and that's one thing i liked about watching those films in a row is that no one film felt like the other in a way even though you could definitely tell like the snyder era and like the walter hamada jeff johns like era like you could definitely tell like how it started with nolan and snyder when it went to jeff johns how it got mucked up a bit and then hamada kind of was just like having a zombie of dc into something else you could definitely tell the different ways, but each film felt unique. And I hope they continue that here. We're also going to have Greg Berlanti's long-awaited TV show of Lanterns. And I'm so happy that they're using Jon Stewart. He has been long overdue, and they're going to have him with Hell Jordan. That's awesome. I like how it's described as true detective in space. Then we have The Authority, which I'm not familiar with. Were they from Wildstorm? It looks like they said they were from Wildstorm. I have not been familiar with The Authority, so that's going to be interesting. Paradise Lost is going to be based on Themyscira, Paradise Island, the Amazonians. I can't wait for that. That sounds cool. Maybe we'll get some cameos from other actresses who played Wonder Woman. Just get Suzanne Eisenberg, Linda Carter, Gal Gadot, and then get Connor Leslie on there. Please do it. Do it. Anyway. But here's what I found interesting the most, uh, The Brave and the Bold. And The Brave and the Bold is going to be based on The Brave and the Bold comics where Damian Wayne appeared. So we're going to have Robin again on film. You realize that like Robin in live action, we had Titans. Before that and on film, before Brave and the Bold, the last time we had Robin was Chris O'Donnell. It's been a long time, but this is the first time we're going to have Damian Wayne that I find fascinating. It sounds like they're going to go with an older Batman. They might go with another actor, but wouldn't it be cool if they got Affleck back again for that? I don't know. I don't know. Just my thoughts. I'm like, that'd be kind of cool. Or if Michael Keaton's in this universe. I don't know. But like, we'll have to see what happens uh, on that. And then Booster Gold. Booster Gold actually could work if James Gunn wrote it or was involved because like that would match his humor. I, I used to think Nathan Fillion would be good at that. But like Chris Pratt, if he's a role, like I don't want too many actors in both roles, but like Chris Pratt could be a really awesome booster goals with like imposter syndrome, you know, <laughs> put into a superhero. And then Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow sounds interesting. It's based on the Tom King written uh, story. That's one thing I like here that he's doing is that he, they're borrowing elements from the comics, which the last one did as well. I mean, Superman's Secret Origin was kind of put into Man of Steel in many ways. You had the death of Superman arc. You had a little bit of the Dark Knight Returns, and uh, Shazam definitely had that new 52 Shazam story. So they've always uh, borrowed elements from the comics, but I do like how they're borrowing it like directly and we'll see what happens there. But the movie that I'm really excited for that piqued my interest because I was just checking it just based on curiosity. I'm kind of checked out. And if it catches my eye, I will watch it. Swamp Thing. I'm looking forward to Swamp Thing. I'm a huge fan of the DC Universe series. I wish it lasted more than a season. We haven't had a film since like the 80s, like since the, the Heather Lochner one, you know. Uh, what was it? There was a Wes Craven Swamp Thing with Adrian Barbeau, but we haven't had a movie since Return of Swamp Thing. So that's going to be interesting. Fingers crossed that Guillermo del Toro directs that, you know, after Blade to Hellboy and Shape of Water and 
uh, stuff. Like, I think it would be great for that creature feature, so to speak. But um, it seems they're going to merge it, or I don't know. They're going to have Aquaman, Shazam. It looks like they're safe, which Shazam is not tied to the DCEU, but there are a lot of references to the DCEU. So maybe Shazam 1 could take place like after the merged universe if something happens with the Flash. I hope nothing's erased entirely. What I hope on Flash is that he changes it, but then like they exist in another verse or another timeline to where everything in the DCU is wrapped up with a happy bow and then everything going forward is merged into this new DC universe right here. That would be interesting, but who knows what's going to happen. Um... It's a shame that they wasted our previous actors and heroes, but uh, yeah, I remain optimistic here. Um, it's just hard to feel excited as a DC fan, and then we recently had Doom Patrol and Titans canceled, so like, I've been feeling pretty depressed lately as a comic book DC fan, but it's nice seeing James Gunn talk about like vision and story remaining key, and I hope he doesn't interfere, and I hope Warner Brothers doesn't make the same damn mistakes again. I wish them all the best of luck. I really do. I hope they get it right this time. I hope they stick to their guns. No deviations. Stay true to the characters. But if my characters are going to be shown as like a joke, if it's like the Peacemaker template on every single thing, then that's going to be kind of a problem. But I'm optimistic that they know what they're doing and... They have to have a really great sacrifice to, like, make something out of an 8 to 10 year story. It's like, maybe this will be all worth it at the end. Who knows? But the Elseworlds label gets me, um, uh, gives me some hope. And then also, like, I mean, shit. Did we ever think we would have, like, Michael Keaton or even Tom McGuire and Andrew Garfield come back in their respective roles years later? Anything's still possible. It may not be the same as it was originally tended, but anything's still possible. We'll have to see about licensing deals, but also I think DC Elseworlds could be cool to see some of these actors who played characters before come back and wrap up their stories or even just do like a one-off. Could you imagine like a Dark Knight Returns adaptation straight out of Frank Miller, but then just get Ben Affleck back and just adapt that whole story? You know, that would be interesting. A Bam Beyond standalone movie with Michael Keaton? Who knows? Um, but yeah... Those are my quick thoughts on the DC Universe so far. Let me know, what are your thoughts? Are you checked out of the DC Universe? Are you uh, hopeful? Are you inspired to see what they come up with? Let me know down in the comments below. I just wish that our creators and actors involved in the previous um, universe and regime got treated better. It's just a damn shame. And I wish this new crew the best of luck and hopefully they don't make the mistakes that the past regimes have made in the past. So... Yeah, here's to a brave new world, I guess.